Airlines are expecting a busy travel season this summer and passengers are hoping to have an easy experience boarding their flights. Lucky for them, the Federal Aviation Administration announced a new plan to mitigate flight disruptions at some of the country's busiest, busiest and biggest airports. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance contributor Vera Gibbons to discuss this. Vera, nice to see you. So how does this play out? Yeah, how does it play out? That's a big question mark going forward. I mean, they are taking these steps now because we are anticipating one of the busiest summer travel seasons on record, particularly for domestic travel. And people have been complaining about congestion, uh, delays, changes to their itineraries last minute, uh, poor reservation agents, a poor booking system, all sorts of problems. So they're trying to get ahead of the problem by bringing in DC to try to limit the disruptions. But there are so many other in, uh, issues plaguing the industry that I just don't know if it's going to be a smooth summer travel season. I mean, the problem is that passenger volume is back up to 2019 levels. It's exceeded it on a couple of uh, months. And the airlines are just ill-prepared to handle the volume. So they're really trying to play catch up. And they're dealing with all sorts of staffing issues still, training issues still. Manufacturers can't get enough aircrafts built uh, to keep up with the demand. I think that the recovery in air travel just happened a lot faster than anyone could have possibly predicted. And the airlines are, are paying the price. And so are we, actually, because <laughs> the prices are so crazy. I don't know if you've yeah. flown lately, but I mean, I fly regularly from Palm Beach to, to Providence back and forth. And sometimes it's like 600 and $14. So I sit around and wait for the fare to actually drop. But the airfares are ridiculous and the airlines can get away with it because the demand is through the roof. Yeah. And what could go wrong? Bring in the federal government. It's bound to get better. Uh, uh, to your point, <laughs> airfares surging 27 percent from a year ago. Average ticket prices to popular destinations like Orlando and Vegas up even more. This is setting the stage for what is expected to be a very busy and expensive uh, summer season indeed. Why is there so much demand? Yes, uh, this does set the stage for what is expected to be a very busy and expensive tr summer travel season. Like I said, probably one of the busiest domestically. We're also seeing more people interested in going to Europe. People are planning. Uh, they plan their trips very early on in the uh, in the season. They want to get out. They want to get away. Part of the pent up demand just has to do with the fact that we've been cooped up for so long, and people really want to get back out there and live a little after you know these rough couple of years that we've all had. Um, the other part of it is people are combining business trips with leisure trips. This is a, this whole leisure trend that's actually going on. Um, also, people see travel now as like uh, really important to one's mental health, and I think that that's important. It's very good to unplug and get away from your daily stresses. That's taking precedence, and that's increasing more interest in people actually getting away. And then also keep in mind too, that everybody's working from home, they're working remotely, they can work from anywhere. So uh, they are are traveling, you know, during the week, not just the weekends anymore. In fact, I spoke to one travel agent, and he said traveling these days is like <laughs> traveling on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving every day now, because it's just a constant flow uh, that the airlines have been ill prepared for. Yeah, it is nuts out there. So circling back to where we started here with the FAA, what can they actually do? How can they actually impact this process? And where what is the status of this plan? I'm actually not I'm not feeling optimistic that they are going to make an, a meaningful impact on the process because I feel like the airlines are just so far behind in where they should be in dealing with these issues. I mean, one of the primary ones that we've been dealing with is the staffing issues. They can't get the pilots, they can't get the agents. Uh, the training has been sort of lackluster in my professional opinion. I mean, I've had problems with reservation agents, I've had problems with booking, I've had problems with my apps. Um, so I think that the problems are too too significant for uh, Washington to actually, to, to actually tackle. Uh, they're trying to get ahead of the problem, but given the fact that the volume is expected to be blockbuster for the summer travel season, I just don't actually foresee um, any kind of solutions going forward, nor do I actually foresee a lot of whole uh, deals this, this, this summer travel season. Those are gonna be really hard to actually come by. Um, so the airlines are faced with a number of issues, then they're, they're trying to tackle them. They've been trying for some time now, and I don't think that bringing in Washington is going to alleviate the stresses that come with traveling these days. I mean, it's just a big headache, but people are more than willing to actually accept the headache because they want to get away at any cost. And even if it does mean uh, flight delays or last minute 
uh, itineraries that have been canceled yeah. or changing of the seats or anything. And people just really want to get out there. Yeah, we just keep traveling. Underlying all this, though, the FAA has been for years underfunded, and that's probably not going to change anytime soon. Vera Gibbons, that's nice correct. to see you. Thanks so much.